the, the, the conflict in Gaza is an Israeli terrorism creation factory. So where, when an end comes, weeks, months from now. But weeks, months, this has been going on for a hundred years. Weeks, months? Gaza has been occupied for a hundred years? No, the war has been going on for a hundred years. As well for Israel, well, no, for I'm, 75 I'm, years. I'm, I'm not denying that for a minute. I'm saying this war has been going on for a hundred years. Chris Sidoti, seorang pengacara hak asasi manusia internasional dari Australia yang juga bekerja sebagai penyelidik PBB pada tanggal 30 Oktober 2024 lalu dalam konferensi persnya mengecam Benjamin Netanyahu atas konflik di Gaza ia juga mengecam tindakan Israel yang melakukan begitu banyak pembunuhan terhadap anak-anak So I, I only want to give you one, um, one, one set of, of all the killing The killing that, that gets me most is the killing of kids. Um, reflecting the fact that I'm a, a father, a grandfather, and in about a month I'll become a great-grandfather for the first time. Um, kid, kids mean something to me. On, on the 7th of October, 38 Israeli children were killed. Um, one of them under the age of two years. Since then, at least as of last week, 13,319 children have been killed in Gaza, of whom 786 were under the age of one. And in addition, 165 children have been killed in the West Bank. Now, that's the only statistic I want to give you. And it's a, a statistic that, to me, says everything. Kids aren't terrorists. Kids aren't terrorists. And yet, between what happened in southern Israel on the 7th of October and what has happened since then, we have had thousands and thousands of kids killed. And that's not even including those who are injured, um, those who are under the rubble, those who have lost limbs. It, it, it's said that the amputations of limbs of children is the greatest in any conflict in um, recorded modern warfare. Kids who have lost parents. You know, I, I, I wonder when the current Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu talks about um, finishing off Hamas. I, I wonder about what the one million children in Gaza will be doing in 20 years time. The, the, the conflict in Gaza is an Israeli terrorism creation factory. And There is no sign of it finishing. Dan ini adalah momen Chris Sidoti membungkam seorang reporter Israel yang berusaha mati-matian mempertanyakan temuan kejahatan terbaru Israel yang ditemukan oleh Chris Sidoti. A couple questions for you. Number one, I, I, I'm trying to absorb your assertion, fear, whatever you want to label it about this next generation you say of, of terrorists, the terrorist breeding ground. That Gaza will become. There have been wars before. I don't want to compare them, but World War II, the, the destruction left in Germany, the destruction of Japan. These didn't lead to breeding grounds for a future generation of terrorists. So, God willing, Gaza will emerge ruled by something other than an internationally designated terror group. Why? Why do you? It seems like an assumption that. Gazan children growing up today are going to be terrorists of tomorrow. Is that not a dangerous assumption? Uh, yes, it is a dangerous assumption. And there is one distinct, definitive, determinative difference between the examples that you cite. It's continuing. And there is no end in sight. So when an end comes, weeks, months from now? Weeks, months? This has been going on for a hundred years. 
Weeks? Months? Gaza has been occupied for a hundred years? No. The war has been going on for a hundred years. As well for Israel? Well, no, for I'm, 75 I'm, I'm, years. I, I'm not denying that for a minute. I'm saying this war has been going on for a hundred years. And there is no end in sight. To help these kids, to help Israel, it's got to stop. Then there is a possibility. But until it stops, there is no chance. It's an interesting take. Um, in terms of the report itself, I want to gain some clarity because it seems like a, a Pandora's box. The assertion or the conclusion one of them made in your latest report is that anything that helps Israel carry out or continue to carry out what's labeled as an occupation needs to cease. Any assistance from member states. There's a few different ways of looking at it, and I want to clarify which way you're looking at it. Because one can say that anything that benefits uh, settlements in Judea and Samaria, in Eastern Jerusalem, where have you, that is helping uh, uh, perpetuate what you label as the occupation. There's another way of looking at it, where anything that goes into Israel proper, sovereign Israel, can be put into a proverbial slush fund to enable it to perpetuate this occupation. It's unclear from your report what exactly you mean by that. Can you please clarify? The chair has given that one to me. Um, first, it's, yes, we have occupied, we have defined it as an occupation. Um, so is the Inter -Court of, International Court of Justice. Um, th this is now a decision taken by the most authoritative judicial body in the international system. There ain't no higher than the ICJ. And there's nowhere else to go to get a higher opinion or even an alternative opinion. So the reason why we made the recommendation in the first place, because we said, well, we're pretty good. We're a commission of inquiry. We've got Navi Pillay as our chair, but we are a commission of inquiry. And this is a matter that, in our opinion, needed the authoritative decision of the International Court of Justice. And that body decided overwhelmingly, it wasn't a close thing, overwhelmingly, that the occupation was unlawful. So our opinion has been superseded by that of the most authoritative body in the international system. And it was the court that said that states individually and collectively have a responsibility not to aid or assist the continuation of the occupation, the maintenance of the settlements, the establishment of new settlements. Selain itu, seorang jurnalis harian Arab dengan beraninya memberikan kecaman atas kemunafikan negara-negara Barat serta mengungkit kejahatan-kejahatan Israel yang telah melewati batas. Among your mandate is the root causes and do you see some hypocrisy now, especially among Western states who think that history started on October 7th? They try not to mention anything before, as if the conflict started that day. So how, is, how can you highlight the root causes, which deeply seated in the occupation, which lasted, as you know, many, many years, and the atrocities committed not only in, in the Gaza, but also in the West Bank. So how do you highlight that? Uh, my second question about the issue of the children, sir. If you hear the, I mean, the defense minister saying these are human animals, and some saying that we will cut off food, medicine, and water, that create a culture that children, and one of them said, I can bring you the quote, when he said, there is no innocent Palestinian. If these babies and children grow up, they will become terrorists. And just let me see, today, a settler leader, she said she will establish new settlement in Gaza. And she said, the, uh, the sound of bombardment in Gaza is like music in my ear. I am only worried if I don't hear the bombardment. So when you hear this statement and the incitement, I want to ask you if you include this incitement in your report, and that would justify killing 13,000 children with no eye blinking. Thank you. Uh, good 
agree with you uh, about the double standards in approaching in these halls, especially where member states deliberate. And that was the case this morning as well. Sahabat Aswaya, dari sekian banyak kecaman yang dikeluarkan oleh para tokoh dunia untuk Israel, namun seperti yang kita ketahui, hingga sampai saat ini, Israel justru masih terus melakukan agresinya terhadap rakyat Palestina. Lalu, bagaimana menurut kalian? Apakah mereka serius ingin mengakhiri kejahatan perang? Coba berikan tanggapan kalian. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.